What's up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, top hats. What are they and how do you use them? Um, I get asked this question or see messages about this literally on a daily basis, probably three or four a day, uh, where people who are shooting Matthews bows are trying to paper tune and you know usually they'll say oh my rest is as far left as it'll go and I'm still getting a tail right tear is my bow defective am I torquing what am I doing and the answer is no um, what you need to do is use the top hats to tune um, so first what is a top hat so the top hats are these little spacers you see that little black spacer between the cam and the limb right there and they're on either side of the cam um, and Matthews makes a kit of them, and there's six different sizes. So there's you know the largest, the thinnest, second largest, second thinnest, so on and so forth. Um, the idea with the top hats is that instead of moving my rest right or left, I can leave my rest in center shot, and kind of like a yoke tuning on a Hoyt, where you're actually putting twists in and out of the cables, the yokes, to kind of lean that cam. With a Matthews, we're actually shifting this entire harness right or left on the axle. So you're gonna need a bow press to do this. Um, I'm actually surprised at how many people's pro shops say you don't wanna mess with the top hats. You know, Matthew sets those from the factory. And I can tell you right now, they do not tune their bows before they leave the shop. They put the most, they put like the, you know, the four most common sizes in there and they send them out the door. Um, so your pro shop should, if they're a Matthews dealer, they should have top hats. Um, so what you're gonna need to do is let's say I'm getting a tail left tear. Um, when you look at these cams, there's going to be a larger spacer. So for example, on mine, you know, the larger spacer here is on the left side and the thinner is on the right. Um, if I'm getting a, let's say a tail left tear, I need to push my cam towards the tear. So I always start with one cam. Um, usually I start with the top cam if it's not already pushed that direction. So you're gonna put your bow in the press we're going to undo these little axle screws right here. And when you do that, you'll be able to pull the entire axle out of, of the limb there. And the top hats are actually, it looks like a little washer, but it's actually on a sleeve here. And the sleeve fits up into the limb. It's probably about three eighths of an inch long. It actually slides into the limb. So they're not just going to fall out when you pull the cam off here. Um, you don't need to take the strings off. You can literally just pull the axle out, lift the cam up, set it on the press right next to you. And then I just use like an Allen wrench and I come in from, from the limb side or from the, the screw side here and you'll kind of feel the lip of that sleeve and you just push them right out. It's super simple. So again, back to the tear. Let's say I have a tail left tear. I'm gonna look at my cams. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna push my top cam or my bottom cam to the left. So the larger spacer is gonna go on the right, the smaller will go on the left then I'm gonna shoot it again. If I'm still ripping tail left, I'm gonna do the same to the other cam. Now, if both cams are pushed left, but I'm still ripping tail left, that means I need to go with a larger spacer on the right and the next smallest spacer on the left. So again, we're moving, we're pushing that cam further and further left until that comes into a bullet hole. Um, it sounds labor intensive, but it's actually incredibly easy. That's one reason I love Matthews. Um, you know, PSE uses a shim system as well, but it's a series of like six or seven tiny little washers. And when you pull the axle out, they all just fall on the ground. And then you're trying to thread the axle back through all these little shims. And it's just a, it's a huge pain in the butt. Um, once you do this a couple times, you can swap top hats in literally like 30 seconds. Um, with the kit of six that they give you, there's plenty of combinations to be able to achieve a bullet hole without really ever having to move your rest. Now, if you get to a point where, you know, let's say, so we've, we've got both the cams pushed, you shoot, and we're just ripping like, you know, an eighth of an inch tail left still, you have two options. So I can either just micro adjust my rest to the right very slightly. You know, if I move my rest a 16th or, you know, 3 seconds of an inch out of, uh, out of center, that's not gonna hurt anything. It's not gonna affect anything. Um, the other option I have is, again, so this is going with the left tear. If I'm still just a hair to the left, what I can do is rather than going with, you know, the next biggest small spacer and the next smallest big spacer, I know that sounds confusing, um, that might overcorrect the problem. 
what I can do is just do one side. So maybe it's easier if you go one smaller on the big. So again, I'm gonna be moving my cam to the left. So I would just take out that left spacer and replace it with the next smaller size and then recinch up my axle, uh, my, my screws here on the axle and shoot that. And it should bring it right into a bullet hole. Um, I'm really, really surprised at A, how many people don't know about the top hat system and then how reluctant so many pro shops are to actually use the top hat system. Um, but it's literally how this bow is designed to be tuned. Because essentially what's happening is rather than leaning the cam one direction as we shift this whole harness right or left and there's only about a 64th of an inch difference between each size of the top hats. Um, what's happening is that, you know, when I, when I move my cam to the left, when I shoot, that string is gonna wanna recenter. So when I pull my string to the, you know, the left slightly, when I shoot, it's gonna wanna come back to the right, thus alleviating, alleviating that tail left tear. So it's an incredibly effective way to tune your bow. Um, like I, my rest is perfectly centered. I have not messed with it at all, which if you're wondering on Matthews, um, all the newer Matthews, the center shot is like 13 sixteenths from the, uh, the shelf right here. So 13 sixteenths, you know, three quarters to 13 sixteenths, seven eighths, anywhere in there. Um, you know, you're gonna be right about that center shot. Um, on the stock ones, they've got a little, there's a little, the stock grip, there's a little line that kind of comes right up the, through the center of the grip. At the top there, there's a little seam. It's about a 16th of an inch outside that line, generally speaking. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to tell. Just line the string up, you know, right through the center of the, the riser on top here, right down through the center of the grip and the center of the shelf, and then line the, the V and your rest up with the string in that position. Um, so if you haven't, you know, if you've got a bow that maybe it's even shooting bullet holes, but your rest is so far inside or outside of center that you're having trouble getting your sight far enough one direction, or it just looks funny because when your arrow's pointed at the target, your stabilizer's off to the side because you're so far inside or outside of center, I would highly suggest using the top hats to tune your bows. We tune every Matthews in the shop using this. Um, you know, the thinnest one is probably a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 64th of an inch. The thickest one is probably, I don't know, eight or nine sixty-fourths. Um, but between, like I said, between the six that they give you, and you can order them directly from, you know, from Matthews or from a pro shop, um, there's undoubtedly a combination of top hats there between the top and bottom cam to where you can achieve a bullet hole without ever moving your rest from center shot. Um, I do kind of plan on making a video actually showing me doing this. Um, I was gonna do it tonight at the shop, but the owner, uh, there's a bunch of people, you know, it's bow season right now. We had some emergencies. These guys are out hunting and one of them derailed his bow. So we are going to be there until 8.30 before I could film. And, you know, I do have a life outside of work. So I decided to come home and make this video. Um, but if you have any more questions on that, like I said, it's pretty simple. You just got to get your bow in a press, relax the string a little bit, um, pull out, undo the, the axle screws here. The axle just slides right out take the sleeves out and swap those around. And again, remember, you push the cam towards the tear. So if it's a tail left tear, you're gonna push one or both of the cams to the left. If it's a tail right tear, you're gonna push one or both of the cams to the right. Um, and you can play around with the different sizes till it just shoots a perfect hole. Um, now you're not going to be able to affect, top hats have nothing to do with the elevation of the tear. So if you're tail high or tail low, your first thing you're gonna wanna do is check your cam timing. Um, these Matthews have basically zero knock travel to where, you know, if my cams, when I put this in a draw board and draw back, if both my cams come around and touch this cable right at the same time, um, as long as my arrow is at 90 degrees right through the burger hole, which is the rest hole, so your arrow and your knock should basically be lined up perfectly with this little bar right here, um, you're almost always gonna have a level tear. If it's not, like if you're shooting a cable driven rest, um, those tend to tune a little knock high because they drop so soon that that arrow starts falling. Um, so you may end up tuning a little knock high with that. Um, but generally speaking, like I said, you know, your top hats are not gonna affect your elevation in the tear. It's just gonna be your, your windage or your, you know, the, the left right tear. So give that a try. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or better yet, it's almost easier if you just call the shop. Um, you know, we're at the bow rack in Springfield, Oregon. I'm not just gonna blast our phone number out on, on the internet right now. Um, but I can explain something over the phone in better detail and in a 
fifteenth of the time it takes me to text it out. Um, you know, we answer a lot of phone calls this time of year regarding tuning. So hopefully that helps. Um, you know, we appreciate all the support. It's kind of crazy this time of year with it being bow season. You know, I'm kind of in and out of the shop last minute notice just based on when people get back and are taken off for hunting, you know, like the other employees. Uh, so I may not get back to you right away. I may not have service for a couple days, but I will do my best to get back to you. So thanks for watching. Remember, precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle, and I'll see you on the range.